This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to answer the question, why is Bitcoin so inefficient? This comes out of a discussion I was having with Dan Zuver on Twitter, Dan Zuver, an XRP supporter, and he said, I don't know about you, but I consider 127 terawatt hours spent per year to run a seven transactions per second blockchain incredibly inefficient. So we're talking about efficiency here, truly one of the most inefficient things invented by mankind. And my, my answer to him was, yes, it's a highly inefficient way to secure a ledger, unless, of course, you care about neutrality and decentralization. These are things that XRP followers do not care about. That's what makes Bitcoin so different from centralized consensus projects like XRP. We've discussed this before, but I'm getting this a lot on my channel, so I want to bring up these same points again. Blockchain is a mostly useless technology. Most of the time, you're better off using a centralized database, which will almost always be more efficient, faster, cheaper, often a better UX as well. So blockchain only makes sense for one thing, in my opinion, and that's creating neutral money. And that's only possible if you pair blockchain with distributed proof of work. This is Satoshi's real innovation. If you use proof of stake, if you use proof of trust or some federated model of unique node lists like XRP, the system will always eventually collapse in on itself and become like fiat, where whoever has the most coins will end up with the most power. Now, how do consensus mechanisms break? Proof of stake, if an attacker can gain control of more than 50% of the coins, it's over. If he keeps staking all of his coins, he'll eventually control the entire system as he earns more and more rewards with every block that he wins. And at this point, the system is permanently broken and there is no fix. This is very important to notice that there's really no way to reverse this. Now, this may have already happened with Ethereum thanks to their initial coin distribution through the pre-sale and pre-mine. And there's a lot of evidence that there were whales who bought using different email addresses and different accounts, etc. So the pre-sale for Ethereum really is the original sin. And then moving from proof of work to proof of stake is really activating that original sin and ensuring that you can never have neutral consensus again on Ethereum. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to click that subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. So how does this proof of stake collapse of consensus contrast with proof of work? Well, under proof of work, if an attacker gains control of even 99% of the ASICs and 99% of the hash rate, people can still build more mining rigs and fight back. Under proof of stake, it would already be over. There's no way to reverse it. There's literally no way out in proof of stake. So this raises the question, if blockchain plus proof of work is so great, can you create a new crypto by recreating Bitcoin by pairing blockchain with proof of work today? And there are a number of projects that people are always asking about in my comments that seek to do some version of this. And my answer always is this, you can try, but it's really too late because the cat's already out of the bag. You're never going to catch up to Bitcoin. These projects will never catch up to Bitcoin, which has had this 14 year head start. The other key thing to recognize is it's impossible to recreate Bitcoin's immaculate conception in this day and age of global surveillance. If Satoshi had launched Bitcoin today, all of the three letter agencies would know who he is and it would have been very difficult for him to hide. Also, Satoshi himself was a very special and rare type of person, the type of person who's humble enough to walk away from riches and glory. By contrast, all the crypto guys, all the Solano and XRP and Ethereum billionaires, they're still public figures. They don't seem to be able to walk away because they love basking in the glory, and they've all been actively dumping on their followers, like Vitalik. Vitalik dumped at least 25% of his coins on his followers. Jed McCallick ended up dumping all of his billions and billions of XRP on the XRP army, which was dumb enough to lap it up. Here's a simple test you can apply when you're talking and thinking about decentralization. If you know whom to sue, it's probably not that decentralized. So for XRP, for example, the SEC knew immediately whom to sue. For Ethereum, you sue the Ethereum Foundation, you sue Vitalik, you, you sue Cat Purse Boy, and you hope he dresses a little nicer when he goes into court, and you sue Joe Lubin. And I'm expecting the SEC to sue Ethereum within the next six to 12 months. So if you're an Ethereum holder, that's something you can look forward to. By contrast, whom do you sue for Bitcoin? There's really no corporation, there's no foundation, there's no adult in charge or centralized group of people who control changes to the protocol. 
the Bitcoin devs have no control over the protocol. They can make whatever changes they want to the software, but it's really up to the node operators, the full nodes, the decentralized nodes, to decide whether to run that software. And these nodes are found in every country on the planet. How do you go around suing all these individuals? It won't even make any sense. So that's really the big difference between Bitcoin and these other cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is very, very special and it's inefficient for very important reasons to maintain its neutrality and its decentralization. If you want something that's centralized and is really fast, you don't even need to use XRP or Solana or anything like this. You can just use Venmo or PayPal, and then you have to deal with censorship and you have to deal with all the problems that come with centralization. Bitcoin fixes this, and there's still a lot of people, in particular the XRP army, that still does not understand this, but they will continue uh, to learn about this and they will eventually figure this out, especially as XRP continues to trend to zero against Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.